Hi, my name is Michael, and I'm the volunteer manager here at the Mini Time Machine Museum of Miniatures in Tucson, Arizona. And today, I'm going to read with you one of my favorite books, The Big Orange Splot, which is written and illustrated by Daniel Manis Pinkwater. This is a story about self-expression and creativity. And I'm sitting here today in front of one of our Community Corner exhibitions, Rick's Renovations, The Dollhouse and Vehicle Redo. And after the story today, we're going to talk about how Rick's miniatures relate to the theme of expression and creativity. The Big Orange Splot. Mr. Plumbean lived on a street where all the houses were the same. He also had a pretty cool mustache. He liked it that way, and so did everyone else on Mr. Plumbean Street. This is a neat street, they would say. And then one day, a seagull flew over the house of Mr. Plumbean. He was carrying a can of bright orange paint. Nobody knows why. And he dropped the can, nobody knows why, onto Mr. Plumbean's house. It made a big orange splot on Mr. Plumbean's house. Ooh, too bad, said everybody. Mr. Plumbean's gonna have to paint his house again. I suppose I will, said Mr. Plumbean. But he didn't paint his house right away. He looked at the big orange splot for a long time, and then he went about his business. The neighbors got tired of seeing the big orange splot. Someone said, Mr. Plumbean, we wish you'd get around to painting your house. Okay, said Mr. Plumbean. He got some blue paint and some white paint, and that night he got busy. He painted at night because it was cooler. When the paint was gone, the roof was blue, the walls were white, and the big orange splot was still there. Then he got some more paint. He got some red paint, some yellow paint, some green paint, and some purple paint. In the morning, the other people on the street came out of their houses. Their houses were all the same. But Mr. Plumbing's house was like a rainbow. It was like a jungle. It was like an explosion. There was the big orange splot, and there were little orange splots. There were stripes, there were pictures of elephants and lions and pretty girls and steam shovels. The people said, Plumbing has popped his cork. He's flipped his wig. He's blown his stack and dropped his stopper. They went away muttering about Mr. Plumbing. That day, Mr. Plumbing bought carpenter's tools, and that night he built a tower on top of his roof, and he painted a clock on the tower. The next day, the people said, Plumbing has gushed his mush. He's lost his marbles, and he slipped his hauser. They decided they would pretend that they wouldn't notice. That very night, Mr. Plumbing got a truck full of green things. He planted palm trees, baobabs, thorn bushes, onions, and frangipani. In the morning, he bought a hammock and an alligator. When the other people came out of their houses, they saw Mr. Plumbing swinging in a hammock between two palm trees. They saw an alligator lying in the grass. Mr. Plumbing was drinking lemonade. Plumbing has gone too far. This used to be a neat street. Plumbing, what have you done to your house? The people shouted. Well, my house is me, and I am it. My house is where I like to be, and it looks like all of my dreams, Mr. Plumbing said. The people went away. They asked the man who lived next door to Mr. Plumbing to go and have a talk with him. Tell him that we liked it before he changed his house. Tell him that his house has to be the same as ours so that we can have a neat street. The man went to see Mr. Plumbing that evening. They sat under the palm trees drinking lemonade and they talked all night long. Early the next morning, the man went to get lumber and rope and nails and paint. When the people came out of their houses, they saw a red and yellow ship next door to the house of Mr. Plumbing. What have you done to your house? They shouted at the man. My house is me, and I am it. My house is where I like to be, and it looks like all of my dreams, said the man, who had always loved ships. He's just like Plumbing, the people said. He's got bees in his bonnet, bats in his belfry, and knots in his noodles. Then. One by one, they went to see Mr. Plumbing late at night. They would sit under the palm trees and drink lemonade and talk about all their dreams. And whenever anybody visited Mr. Plumbing's house, the very next day, that person would set about changing their own house to fit their dreams. What do you think? Do all the houses being different make them more interesting?
Whenever a stranger came to the street of Mr. Plumbing and his neighbors, the stranger would say, this is not a neat street. Then all the people would say, our street is us and we are it. Our street is where we like to be and it looks like all of our dreams. The end. Just like Mr. Plumbing, Rick, the artist who created these miniatures, likes to express his creativity and individuality. Rick knew he wanted to be an artist from the time he was 10 years old and has been painting for over 30 years. In addition to painting teeny tiny walls, he also paints large scale murals. Murals are paintings that can be as big as the side of a life-size building. Similar to Mr. Plumbing, Rick uses a colorful palette like you see here on the carriage with lots of trim and details to express himself. He also hand painted the interesting designs and patterns you see on the walls, floors, and ceilings of this dollhouse. He often includes symbols and motifs that are meaningful to him. Mr. Plumbing shows that he is different by painting his house a rainbow of colors. Are there ways that you show that you are different? If so, who are you different from? How are you different from them? And why do you show that you are different? And lastly, here's something fun to think about. If you could paint your house any way that you wanted to, what would it look like? What colors would you choose? How about you draw a picture of your house so we can see what it looks like? I hope you enjoyed this book and thank you for spending some time with us. We hope to see you soon.